Well, after a bye week, the Oklahoma Sooners ranked third in the country and undefeated. Well, they're ready to hit the gridiron as the Sooners back in action for a Big 12 home game against Iowa State. It'll be this Saturday, October 7th, 11 a.m. kickoff. Game can be seen on Fox. Sooners come in as a four touchdown favorite. Before we continue, deepest thoughts, prayers uh, to the family, loved ones of those victims killed or injured in this past Sunday's horrific event in Las Vegas. Of course, close to 60, um, at least, who died, um, several hundred injured um, because of the act of a coward. And again, so many lives have changed because of what happened last Sunday. And, you know, on a personal note, um, Las Vegas is where my wife and I got married. Um, I went to Las Vegas a couple of years ago, as you may know, um, from a couple of shows that I did on this very page. And uh, wife and I had planned on going back to Vegas uh, pretty soon. We're still going to go, by the way. But again, deepest thoughts to all those um, affected by what happened on uh, Sunday. I can't imagine what's going on in their world right now. Now, making the difficult segue to football. Again, we mentioned that the Sooners coming off a of bye week. And if this year is any indication from last year, hey, crown Oklahoma the national champions. <laughs> now, I might be thinking, why? Why? Okay, you're getting ahead of yourself. Remember, though, last year after the rocky September, Sooners had a bye week, and then they ran the table, winning all nine of their Big 12 games and beating Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. That's right, 14-game winning streak now if you count the 10 games from last year and the four from this year. And you can always say a bye week comes at a good time for the Sooners, as I mentioned, at the end of the Baylor game. It comes at a perfect time just because on both sides of the ball, especially defensively, OU was banged up. And defensively, they're going to be getting some uh, reinforcements, um, including Will Johnson, their terrific safety, um, who's been dealing with concussion issues recently. Looks like he'll be ready to go. Robert Barnes looks like he will be back as well at that safety position. So some much-needed depth that Oklahoma can very well use in the secondary. And speaking of depth, defensive line, Amani Bletso. Might remember him. Played six games last year and then got busted at PED issues. So was suspended for a year. Well, the year has come and it's gone. And Bletso is back. And he probably won't start against Iowa State. But according to Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator for the Sooners, looks like he will play and be a part of that rotation. And the Sooners could really use a uh, pass rush in terms of that front four, or the front three, depending upon their alignment. But the news, not all peaches and cream for the Crimson and Cream. That's because Curtis Bolton, linebacker, injured his ankle against Baylor and... Injured it severely enough to where now it's going to require surgery. So his 2017 is kaput. And obviously, this really brings OU's linebacking depth into big question. Of course, you still have Emmanuel Beal and you still have the presence of Caleb Kelly on the outside. And of course, inside, you know, you got the true freshman of Kenneth Murray. Plus, you have John Michael Terry as well. But once again, uh, losing Curtis Bolton, this does not help matters at all because you really, really need as many linebackers as possible to make Mike Stoops' defense work. And that's a valuable piece gone. So we'll see how the Sooners can adapt life now without Curtis Bolton for the remainder of the 2017 season. Well, the Sooner defense will take on Iowa State offense that the first three games, you know, didn't look too bad. Even in the overtime loss to Iowa just a few weeks ago for the Cyhawk Trophy, Iowa State's offense, I thought, did some really good things. Even though, of course, they lost that game in overtime. But this past week, uh, yeah, that Thursday night game against Texas and what I thought at times was just an unwatchable ball game with Texas winning 17-7. Um, Iowa State's offense, uh, you could tell just how successful it can be when the running game is on target. David Montgomery, you know, he's averaging five and a half yards a carry. However, only touched the ball nine times in the loss to Texas. And again, you got to give Texas credit, too, for the way that they've been playing since that awful defensive performance against Maryland, and Texas has looked like a different team, and you could easily say that they should have beat USC. And Texas literally shut Iowa State down. As a matter of fact, um, Iowa State had a big time off balance as far as the pass-to-run ratio. In fact, um, the quarterback for Iowa State, Jacob Park, ended up throwing the ball 48 times in the game. That's right, 48 as the Cyclones um, you know, virtually abandoned that running attack in the second half, and it really was not the answer. You know, Park threw it 48 times, only completed 23 passes, 
and had some interceptions. As a matter of fact, Iowa State had at least three turnovers in that game, and for the most part, the Cyclone offense was stymied. Um, their only touchdown drive was because of a poor Texas punt. It gave Iowa State incredible field position in Texas territory. Cyclones took advantage of that, but not much else of anything else. And I think the big thing for the Sooner defense, you got to be able to force third and long. That's what Texas was able to do. Iowa State in the game, 3 of 12 on third down conversions and 0 of 2 on fourth down conversions for a combined 3 of 14 on third and fourth down tries. A game like this, Iowa State, I tr trust you, mate, they will get back to trying to make that ground game work. Again, David Montgomery so far has been their most productive offensive weapon, even though I know that they still have that terrific all Big 12 receiver in Alan Lazard. But so far, it's been Montgomery, and at times, Jacob Park has really stuck up to join his quarterback. And you know, the running game, the fact that David Montgomery is getting the job done, a little bit of a surprise when you consider that Mike Warren, two years ago, who's still on the roster, you know, had well over a thousand yards rushing, but his game has gone a little bit south since. So, you know, but you have a feeling if Iowa State is going to pull off an incredible upset or at the minimum hang around until the fourth quarter, it'll be because of the play of David Montgomery and that rushing attack. Without that, I think this game plays right into Oklahoma's hands. So we'll see if the defense, unlike that game against Baylor, can play a lot better. Looking at um, Oklahoma in terms of the offense, hey, got to remember Saturday. Could be a very wet Saturday. They're, I think, calling for 60 or 70% chance of rain early morning kickoff. Expect a wet field. Obviously, expect a very wet pigskin. So the Sooners, in terms of ball protection, now more than ever with inclement weather expected to arrive this weekend. And Norman, Sooners really, really got to protect that ball. And I would expect that the ground game will be more of a foundation if the weather is going to be as wet as we think it is. So we'll see if... Once again, the start of Abdul Adams in the first half and the second half with Trey Sermon being able to maybe provide that final kick, if that will be enough for the Sooners. And I have a feeling that offensively should be a good game for this team, even though Joe Lanning of Iowa State has made that conversion from quarterback to now linebacker, had 20 stops. In Bottom line is I don't think Iowa State – poses much of an offensive threat. You can say the same thing about Baylor, but I think with the off week and with the fact the Sooners have healed up a little bit, and I think have really made some adjustments defensively, and plus you're getting Johnson as well as Barnes back in the secondary. This should be an approved performance for the Sooners defensively, and I think, again, the Sooners, I believe, will get the job done by majority-wise running the ball against Iowa State. There's a big reason why Oklahoma's a 28-point favorite, and I think they get back on track and extend it to a 15-game winning streak. Got to remember the Cyclones only had 264 yards of total offense against Texas. Final thoughts on this game? Well, I pretty much just gave them to you. I mean, the Sooners should be in the driver's seat in this game. It may not be a pretty game because of the weather. And again, Baker Mayfield may not throw for 300 yards in this game, but I don't think that's going to be a prerequisite to win. I've got the Sooners winning 42-13. to 13. I think they do cover that 28-point spread, but barely. And, of course, next week, Get ready for the Texas Longhorns, but OU knows that they cannot look ahead to Texas, and I don't think they will, not with the bye week, and not with the fact that Oklahoma, after that lackluster performance against Baylor, does have something to prove. Keep in mind that I will have my post-game show um, late Saturday afternoon or early Saturday evening. I'll try to get it on right after the game, but can't make any guarantees, but it will be on sometime uh, late Saturday afternoon or early Saturday evening at the latest. And don't forget, me and the coin go head-to-head, -head, my three picks. It'll be on this very web page probably um, on Thursday, so make sure to check that out. I've got OU winning 42-13. to 13. Boomer Sooner.